So here we're going to talk about the concept of electroneutrality, mainly because if we use it in, um, in conjunction with the idea of mass action, we can calculate the equilibrium chemical composition of a system. So electroneutrality, first of all, it deals with charge equivalence. So this is the concentration of charge rather than the concentration of just a molecule. So what does this mean? So an example of this is for a cation like calcium, which has two positive charges associated with it. So instead of just worrying about what is the concentration of calcium, since calcium has two positive charges associated with it, it's essentially taking concentration of that charge. So it would be like saying two, because there are two positive charges associated with the calcium, times the concentration of the calcium. So each calcium ion has essentially two charges associated with it, so you multiply the concentration of that ion by two to get the concentration of charge. So if you had calcium, or potassium, sorry, then there's only one charge associated with it, so you just care about the concentration of potassium. You're just multiplying it by one. So that's what we mean when we're talking about the concentration of charge rather than the concentration of just uh, the ion itself. Okay, so in solutions, the concentrations of positive and negative charge balance out. So that is, in a nutshell, the entire concept of electroneutrality. Essentially, the sum of positive charge equivalents equals the sum of negative charge equivalents, or a different way of stating that is that the overall charge of a solution is zero. It's not going to be positive on balance. It won't be negative on balance. It will be neutral. It, the charge will be zero. Okay, so this is just stating that in a in somewhat different way. So here you've got the sum of positive charge equivalents equal to the sum of negative charge equivalents, so that the overall charge of that solution is zero. So here's an example. This is a reversible reaction again. Uh, calcium and sulfate forming a solid over here on the other side. And we know the pH of the water is 4, so we've got a few different ions in the water or in this solution, right? We've got, got the calcium ion, we've got the sulfate, but because the pH is, zero, or is 4, sorry, we also have Hydrogen, oh, really messy. Oops. We also have hydrogen ions and we have hydroxyl in solution. So if we wanted to write the electroneutrality equation here, we would set all of the positive charge equivalents equal to all of the negative charge equivalents. So what it would essentially look like this. So we've got a calcium ion here. And there are two charges associated with that calcium ion. So that's why we have the two multiplied by the concentration of calcium. So hydrogen just has one positive charge associated with it. So that's why we just have the um, That's why we have the 1 times the hydrogen there. OK, so then the sulfate has two negative charges associated with it. That's why there's the 2 there. And then again, the, the hydroxyl just has the 1 negative charge, so we just multiply that by 1. So again, all of these things are the concentrations of the ions multiplied by how much charge each one of those ions has. Okay, so why do we care about this? Again, just because it lets us, it gives us another sort of trick in our toolbox to calculate what the equilibrium chemical composition of a system will be. And we'll do some examples of this in class.